can we call it mycelium? No, but butcher bio is not mycelium. This is bacterial nanocellulose. You know, we're not mushrooms. We're not collagen. Uh, we're not, you know, pineapple. We are the first in the United States commercially viable bacteria-derived textile, uh, nanocellulose-derived textiles. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the new episode of Sustainable Talks with NNN. Ciao from Niccolo. Ciao from Nico from Amsterdam. Today we have Zimri with Bucha Bio. This new project just came up in New York City, and we would love to know about you, know about your project, what are you doing, how you approach sustainability, and what is Bucha Bio? Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah. Zimriti Inshai here, CEO and founder of Bucha Bio. Very and, young um, CEO, eh? <laughs> everything started out of my Temple University dorm room, right? A few years ago, starting this company by growing kombucha-derived biomaterials out of shoe boxes, which my roommate. Wow. So it's been a pretty quick journey. I mean, we've accelerated really, really quickly. And I guess I never even imagined that at the age of 22 that I would be running a biotechnology company. I think even when I started, I didn't think it was, I didn't even know that I was starting a biotechnology company. Tell us about, about you. What is sustainability for you and how you got to this project? Absolutely. I think for me, sustainability is a holistic concept of a better earth for all of us, better material specifically for what we do. If you're doing sustainability at a small scale in a garage, that's amazing. If you can build it into a company and have it be in, in millions of products worldwide, you know, I think industry is what's going to enable widespread sustainability. So for me, sustainability is taking this company and scaling it uh, to really make a difference uh, in the world with bi better biomaterials. Zimri, we had a lot of guests and everyone gave us a different approach on sustainability. And I think you are the first one with a great American mentality, go and go big, otherwise go home and make it scalable. So where, where Bucha uh, Bio was born and how? I was going to school in Tokyo. Uh, I went to Japanese high school in Chatan Koko uh, and then went to Tokyo. And as soon as I saw the Shinkansen or the bullet trains, that I really wanted to do something on the edge of technology. And it was really exciting and cool. And I didn't know exactly what that was going to be yet. When I came back to the United States, I thought, I want to take that same energy and build teams around things that I want to do. And that turned out to be you know, a different assortment of ideas and companies. And, and this one was especially interesting to me because it combined fashion, which I loved, uh, you know, myself as a vegetarian plant-based person, my values, and this trend that I saw in my peers, uh, you know, as a you know, millennial Gen Z, I saw uh, even among my colleagues and classmates that they cared deeply about these issues. And so that I knew that the market was fairly entrenched, that this was not just a trend, it was really going in this direction. So growing sheets of biomaterial out of shoe boxes with, with kombucha, that was cutting edge. And I just ran with it and started doing it, pitching it to anybody I could. Uh, I was at the time in Philadelphia. So that's really where the company was born. And uh, a lot of support from Temple University, won the Innovative Idea Competition there, won another non-dilutive competition, the Be Your Own Boss Bowl, and uh, built a team. Made a product. We created a pillow for Cohair Co., which is an interior design firm. And then I took that and I, I pitched Indie Bio and I said, Hey, Indie Bio, look what I did with $12,000 and some shoe boxes. Imagine what I could do with a quarter million. Uh, give me a shot. Uh, they did. And so, where is the production now? So, what do you do? What do you produce from Kombucha? Well, I can tell you yeah. or I can show you. So, the company's name is Bucha Bio, that is derived from Kombucha. Uh, originally, when we took a commercial kombucha, same thing you drink, we took all the bacteria and yeast, we started the, you know, evolving them really quickly to be able to grow textiles like the one I'm holding. What I'm holding is a sheet of our biomaterial. It is beautiful. It's matte black with a smooth finish. And this has been created really in the last few months. At the beginning of the company, they looked a lot different than what I'm holding, which is, you know, if I had to describe it to, to, to people on audio, would be kind of this thick, silky sheet of material that you can kind of bend and flex and stretch um, made of bacteria and, and plant-based biopolymers. So that's kind of what it was today, but it didn't always start that way. You know, it was more traditional kombucha 
uh, biomaterial, which was just taking your kombucha, dumping it into black tea and sugar and throwing it into sheets. You know, nowadays we have a little more sophisticated science. We have our own consortia, our own group of bacteria and yeast. We have our own plant-based biopolymers, kind of a replacement for polyurethane that's 100% bio-based and plant-derived. And we kind of combine all of these elements to, to create our product. Uh, so that's kind of what we do um, and what the company stands for. And where is the production located? Uh, we do have an overflow production facility in, in Philadelphia in case we need that. But the majority of our production now happens right here in New York City uh, in the Indie Bio Laboratories uh, at Rockefeller University. So you, are, you say that it's kombucha, basically yeast plus biopolymer, mix right. it together, and then right. on what support? So let me break this down step by step to give a, yeah. a really clear picture of our processing. So you take these same bacteria or, or many of the same bacteria and yeast that you would find in the same kombucha that you drink, you're going to pour that into black tea and sugar, which is what the bacteria like to eat. And then at the top of the liquid that they're growing in, they will form this pellicle. What that means is just this kind of rubbery, kind of semi-translucent mat of material that will start to form on its own. So, you know, the bacteria for us, they do most of the work. Over 14 days, they grow to be this thick sheet on top of that material, on top of that liquid. We then take that out. We're going to dry it. We're going to treat it, you know, dye it, and then treat it with our biopolymers to really bring it up to industry spec. And, and that's what you see today. And are you already in a scalable position? And how do you see the company in the next six, 12 months, one year? Right now we're prototyping with some, some, some really well notable brands worldwide, some, some luxury brands in Europe, in the United States, footwear brands, really well known, create some really exciting partnerships and some really exciting prototypes. Uh, and then from that, you know, get some, something like a large PO, large purchase order, raise a little bit more money. We want our first pilot production facility to potentially stay in New York, somewhere in Brooklyn, New, or even across the river in New Jersey. So we're looking at a few different production methods to really bring this to, to the market in a big way. Uh, and that's the next six to 12 months. Yeah, Perfect. And did you do it in New York? I think will be expensive production. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, luckily, you know, we don't need a bioreactor. We don't need any lab space even. We just need kind of warehouse space. And so yeah. even in Brooklyn, you know, warehouse space, especially because we vertically stack our farms, you know, like a classic vertical farm setup. Um, it shouldn't be crazy. It should yeah. be all right. Yeah, sure, um, sure. Can we call it mycelium? No, but Bucha Bio is not mycelium. This is bacterial nanocellulose. So, you know, we're not mushrooms. We're not collagen. Uh, we're not, you know, pineapple. We are the first in the United States commercially viable bacteria-derived textile, uh, nanocellulose-derived textile. What shocks me is that even some of these competitors in, in the next-gen material space, some of the people making mycelium leather or, or making collagen-based leather, they're still using PU or polyurethane. That's, that's petrochemical, that's plastic. So I think it's a step in the right direction, but it was never my intention, uh, especially as a young founder, to create something that compromised itself with something like PU. We'll never use petrochemicals, you know. Have you done a life cycle assessment to the product and uh, what's the biodegradability related? We do a lot of our own internal testing uh, oh, in, sure. in water and seawater and soil. So from those testing, what we can say is that, you know, we should have a pretty long lifespan. And when you want that lifespan to stop or you want it to start biodegrading, it's pretty simple. You know, we're industrially compostable and our end goal for the material is to be able to bury it in soil and just put it in the ground. Over time, the microbes, the moisture, uh, should unlock the biopolymers and biodegrade it. You know, we have estimates of even 40 days from starting that kind of process with the right conditions to be able to completely return it to the earth. And that's our end goal is for the end consumer to, you know, either be able to, to send it back and we industrial recycle it or industrial compost it, or you can just put it in your garden. Do you have any specific feature that you want to tell us? A big part of our branding is, is stepping away from leather heritage it is so much more excited about creating something new and different and unique than just a leather replacement. So if you can see, so the material, and I'll explain for viewers listening on audio, is that this is one of our thinner sheets in a magenta colorway. And if you can see this, you can probably see my head, my face. Yeah. What we're creating is a novel biomaterial. Now, you know, even our partners in luxury auto are potentially giving it its own name. So we're not going to be calling it a leather replacement. We're calling it something brand new, something different. 
And that's and that's a that's a great approach because everyone, let's say, cactus leather or pineapple leather, it's not le yeah. you know, it's not yeah. a replacement of something. It's the new, the new something that is coming up. So what we're creating is is very different from animal or even plastic leather in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, number one is that if it's not pigmented or not put in a matte black, oftentimes our material is translucent, meaning you can see through it. The other thing is if you if you um, laser cut our material, it comes out white, usually it comes out black for us. Imagine like these crazy white designs you can't see through, but everything else you can. These are the kind of designs that even our partners in you know, potentially luxury auto or footwear are experimenting with as, as new design potentials. Zimri, does this mean that you can make basically any color with, with this material? There is not limitation of uh, brownish cognac uh, base. The thing about our material is the fact that its base is cellulose. Cellulose is the same thing as it's in paper. So as you can imagine, it takes dye pretty well. Uh, we've even been able to Pantone match the color for some of our clients. Are you able also to, to use, let's say, uh, more natural dyes? Uh, last uh, talk we had was with uh, Anna Mellorella, was an Italian dye house right. that they do only with land, for instance, but it's very challenging. Yep. I mean, she put 25 years of her experience. Yeah, to get to, to where to she is. Up. Publicly, we've had a partnership with, with Spira. Uh, Spira is on the uh, creating algae-based dyes. Our, our, they can do a blue, they can do a red, they're looking at the green to yellow. Um, you know, one of our fellow cohort companies, Microterra, uh, has given us just small samples of uh, lemna, which is kind of the new uh, future protein, probably better than soy even. It's also grown in a lake. We can do green and we can do black with that. Uh, natural dyes, you know, there's so many and they're, they're available online. So I don't think there's any excuse for, um, you know, I think for, for a long-term vision of switching over. What is the dark side of your project? What is the challenge and the difficulty that you're facing and you want to approach uh, soon? Essentially, there's a few things that are really hard about, about working with this material that, that no one's been able to solve that the pellicle or what you create, because listen, anybody, from their garage or their kitchen can grab kombucha and pour it into liquid and, and, and they can try to create their own kombucha biomaterials. The problem is going to be that those materials are brittle. They will biodegrade too quickly. They will absorb and retract water. Uh, they don't make great textiles. So how do you take what's great about, about bacterial nanocellulose, which is the fact that it's super strong. It can be as strong as steel in the correct applications. Uh, tensile strength is amazing. How do you take that and the fact that it self forms, how do you take all that and, and keep what's great and get rid of what's bad? And, and it's been a challenge and it will continue to be a challenge to, to, to not use PU, to not use polyurethane, uh, to still have great metrics, to stay great you know, water resistance and, and those things um, without using those compromises. So I would say that you know, our commitment to sustainability is both, I think, one of our greatest differentiating factors, as well as you know, one of our greatest challenges, because right? it's it's a lot easier just to slap you on something and call it sustainable. Thanks so much to be with us, uh, Zimri, today. And it was an amazing adventure inside your new technology. Hope to see you soon and uh, visit your booth. Good yeah, luck. thank you. Thank you both. Thanks for having me. Take care. Ciao, ciao. You too. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Yep.